Hello guys, welcome back to Tux Writers. In this video, we want to see how you can use revision control software programs or version control systems, more specifically Git in your uh, projects. Let's go for it. So, although it is not, uh, you know, something related to numerical computing, but I think it is uh, it, it is worth to discuss uh, the usage of control, uh, version control software in, uh, in this video series, because, yeah, this is, this completes, sort of, you know, completes the topics that we discussed on, on, on software development or scientific software development. And more specifically, as I said, we want to have a look at, at Git, which is uh, which has a broad, you know, uh, user base nowadays in specialist uh, open source software community. But uh, you know what it what it is all about is uh, you know just imagine that you you are working on a software. Think of it as a repository in which you, when you change something, you it keeps track of all the changes that you have made and also all the, the changes that other people are you know are are making so it it is a, a very very good candidate a very potential tool that you need when you work on a project you know with other people this is the scenario for most of the open source software programs that are being developed by lots of people and you need a system that can merge and keep track of all the things that are changing and can be used to you know to to facilitate the process of development in addition to this you need also these systems you can take advantage of these systems in order to make you know improve your performance in your personal projects because as you can see the system will help you to work more uh let's say more efficient but at the same time also more accurate and you never lose something and you can also you know over time for example after years you can also see what you have done to fix special things or a special issue so uh, that can be also useful for personal projects but let's uh, have a look at how uh, how it works in action now there are some basic terminology for for using git or this uh, revision control uh, software systems that uh, you have repository which is actually the main container for all the source codes and things and uh, when you make some changes to the files you need to commit them I will show you all all these things in action also I will perform some modification on this repository that we have for this introduction to applied numerical computing and then uh, you will see it in action but let's have an introduction first to it and then uh, you know you have branches that the people can work on the project in different branches and in the end you merge all the branches and uh, when you are done when when all the modifications that you want to you wanted to apply are over you can Pull, uh, push it back to the, for example, to the online hosting system like like GitHub. GitHub is actually a hosting system, a sort of, uh, you know, uh, an online cloud that allows you to host uh, Git repositories. But let's see how it works. So you need to install it. That's obvious using all the techniques that we discuss in the installation in, in preparing your scientific computing environment series. So you can install it in this case using package managers and then you can initialize a Git repository. So in this way, you, you can uh, initialize it in any directory or another way that more common when you want to work, when you want to collaborate to, to uh, when you want to contribute to a repository is actually cloning it or you want to use it. You clone something. So this is actually the address of the repository that you clone. And then you download it somehow. It's more or less something like downloading the repository while keeping all the previous, uh, you know, previous contributions. And the Git status tells you that uh, okay, the status of the repository, that whether or uh, is there any, uh, you know, modified file or added file, remove file, this kind of stuff, or there is untracked files. This is also important that there are files that are still untracked that are being that are not being tracked by by the Git system. 
so when you add a file and when you uh, when you again status when you execute a status command it tells you that okay the, these files are added actually and in order to add a file to the git repository you can use git add and then when you have as i said when you are done with the modifications this is very important this is the most important step that you commit your changes so you modify something you add a feature to the code you fix a bug and then you commit the changes with an appropriate message that summarizes the the fix the, the modification that you have made to the source code and uh, yeah, this is actually how it works. With a switch M, you can specify the, the message. And when you remove a file that also needs a commit, because this is a modification to the repository, when you remove a file and then you, you, you execute a status command, it tells you that there, there are some changes to the repository. So you need to, to, to commit it. Like here, you can see that it is uh, removing a file and then committing uh, with a message that it, the file has been removed. And when you do some, you, you know, when you do commits uh, over time, eventually you will have logs. So with the command log, you can see the, the, the history of development on the repository. And this can also be used to go back in time to, to a specific point. So this is also useful. I told you in the beginning that you can move through time and go back to the previous history to see what, what has been done there, or you just extract a file that has been modified and you don't want that modification. So this is just increases the efficiency of development. This is very crucial. And for diffs, it's a you know, famous diff command also in Linux that you can uh, execute git, git diff and it gives you the differences, the, you know, the, the changes that are made between, for example, different commits or different uh, versions or you know, according to the latest commits. I will show you this in action. That it, this, is, this has also this famous uh, you know, syntax. Uh, for uh, for diffs in Linux that tells you that okay this is something crucial to be able to to read, so it tells you that what has been removed and what is uh, what is added actually or the ch the changes. So and this is the way that uh, GitHub displays these diffs. I will show you uh, in uh, for example in an example uh, project. Uh, this is the way that it uh, the the visualizes the the diffs. And when you wanna, uh, you know, when you have some modification to a file and you wanna discard it, you can check it out. Ch checkout command is is used. It's the main usage of checkout command is reverting file to their previous state. So when you, this is very dif a bit different from other revision control system, especially the oldest ones, and uh, the older ones. Sorry. And uh, when you want to check out the revisions, you can also do that from the log I told you. You execute git log, it tells you the, the, the logs, the, the history, and there, there you see that every commit uh, has its own uh, hash code, let's say. And then you can easily say git checkout to the previous hash code, and then it reverts, uh, you know, reverts all the changes back to, to that uh, specific point in time. So yeah, this is actually how a checkout works and you can tag things. So when you reach a specific point that you want to say that, okay, this is version one, you tag it with, for example, V1. And uh, when you want to mark something, this is a sort of mark for, for marking things. Uh, the example here is, for example, paper one final. When you reach a point, you tag it with, um, with, a, with a label. So you can easily use it, and then later on uh, you can use this for, for creating versions in GitHub, for example. And for branches, branches is a very important concept in Git, which means that you have a single project, people are working on that, or you want to have different releases, and you create different branches that are parallel to the main line of development. Just imagine that, take this as an example, I want to contribute to, to an open source project, I create my own branch, like you know, Tox Writers branch. I start doing, uh, I start to do, to 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 work on it. I I make my modifications, and then it can be re revised by the developers. And they, if they see that okay, this this works, they can merge my branch into the main development field, uh, the de development branch. Sorry. 
So this is actually how Git branch works. So you can create a new branch and you can check it out. You can check, uh, you can execute checkout command and it, uh, you know, now switches the, the, the development to the branch uh, expression one or XPR one. So when you start to commit things, you make modifications, they are all applied to the EXP R1. And you go back, if you go back to the master or main branch, then Git automatic, automatically keeps, uh, you know, the files that you have merged, the, the files that you have modified in the XP, EXP R1, and you see the files in the main branch. So eventually you can, you know, over time you can make modification to different branches, and in the end, you can merge them and then removing them. This is, you know, the typical workflow in in using uh, Git branches. And you can see the example here. And then uh, the last stage when you have all the things that you want to uh, push to the uh, to the repository to the online hosting system, you can use this push command. And uh, th th this comes with the with the with the with the concept of remote remote repositories when you say that okay they show me the remote repositories this usually uh, shows you the the repository out of which you have downloaded this uh, the, the, the repo so when you push something it goes to the to the addresses that are defined by this uh, git remote uh, locations let's say and then you can uh, execute this uh, pull uh, command if you have some modifications on the, the target repository or on a repo remote repository. For example, other people have worked on that and they have pushed their changes there and you are still working on your local copy, you can execute pull command and retrieve all those uh, changes. And push is the opposite way that you want to push your changes there. You want to just upload your changes, upload your commits to the original repository. So uh, to demonstrate the concept of branch, let me show you, for example, one of the software tools that we will use a lot. I told you before, FreeFem. The source code, the source uh, repository for FreeFem is this is you know a software that has uh, an active development team. So you can see that um, on a branch master they have uh, they they didn't have any commits for for five months or so. But as I said, this is an active development, and it means that there should be something else here, and that's uh, actually the case because you can see that here we have branches on a develop branch. This is the way that they 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 perform the development. They they commit changes on this uh, develop branch, and in the end they merge all the things that they want uh, to the main development. You can see that there is a commit in three days ago, and when I go to the commits, you can see that these are the list of commits uh, that they have uh, made. Uh, for example, this one, and this is the, actually the diff. Let's show you they, they have this guy have uh, made this uh, these changes to the source code, and this is the address of the source code that is changed, and um, this is the title to fix, the, for example, the issue that they have. And uh, in the end, uh, let me show you how to work with this in action. I want to, for example, let's say we, we clone this repository, the repository that we have for, for this uh, Applied Numerical Computing uh, series. So this is actually the address that I need to clone. So I copy it. I open a new terminal. Let's go to the desktop, for example. And I clone it here. So this is actually, sorry, git clone. And then the address. So this is, uh, oops, I didn't copy that. Yeah. So this is the, the the address of the repository. I press enter, and then it starts to to download the repository for me. So if I go to desktop, I can see that okay, here is actually the downloaded repository. You can see these are all the notebooks that uh, we were discussing actually during this course, and it, it matches this structure. So this is how it is. And then when I execute the status command, it says that the oh sorry, I have to go to to the uh, to the repo. So when I execute the git status command, it tells me that everything is updated and for a git remote uh, 
with switch V to see the full address, it tells you it tells me that okay, this is uh, the origin to push the changes to, and then assume that. Uh, let me open my editor <clears throat> here I want to make a change uh, make some changes to it just this is a readme file you can see the preview here and then I, I say that okay hello here you see that I have added a, you know a minor modification and then I come back here I should save it and I can come back here and when I say git status a modified a modified file readme is modified and when I say git diff it shows me the differences that uh, the differences that it says a plus means that this this is added actually uh, to the file if I say git log it gives it shows me the all the you know the development history on this uh, repository with the corresponding dates and uh, in order to commit I need to add it so just see that before adding that to the status, it says modified and with red color. And when I start to add it, it add with dot. It it, it says it, it means that add everything, any modified thing, any added or modified or removed. Thing. I want to add them all, or I I could have added just readme. And when I say status, it shows that okay now it is uh, something to be uh, committed. It is not a state. It is not in the not stage. Um, you know, sh um, state, let's say. And then um, I can commit it. So when I say commit, I, I say change, for example, change uh, readme, that this is uh, what I, I did actually. So I commit it, and then I can see that, okay, with git log, uh, this is uh, the, 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 the list of uh, the changes that I have made. And if I provide it with one line, then it just shows uh, uh, all the changes in one line. And this is uh, the change that I did just moments ago. And this is the version history of, of this. And when I'm done, uh, I can say that git push and it starts to to push all my all the changes that I have made to the main repository. Of course, I don't want to do this because I have made a stupid change to it, just as an example. Uh, and yeah, that this is uh, how it works. It asks uh, my credential. If I have access to the repository, I can uh, push the changes. So if you want to work on uh, on a scientific computer on on on, a, on an open source project, uh, you know the process is a bit different. I had access to this repository. The process is you clone the repository or you fork it. There is a fork button here on any repository in GitHub. You fork it. You start to make modification on that. So when you fork something, it comes to your user account in GitHub, and then you can clone your own copy of that. You make modification on it. You per you 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 perform the commits, and then you create a pull request. So when you go for your own repositories, you create a pull request, and this is uh, actually the way that you can contribute it. To, to open source project because the developers will see people have created pull requests. I can show you in, uh, in for example, here in uh, uh, free fam source codes that can see that people have contributed by creating pull requests. This is the guy. And then there is a de description of the changes that they have made and also the source codes that they have actually modified. And when the original developers uh, review this and they find it useful, they can merge all the changes. So this is also the concept of pull requests in uh, GitHub or GitLab. Okay, uh, so I think there is nothing more that we want to discuss here. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you find this useful. And my, I highly recommend that you start to use Git in your own projects and also uh, familiarize yourself uh, with, uh, with this uh, concept. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see you next videos.